Hey, what is up models? It is James Siva, and before we get into today's video, a link to my Patreon will be in the description below, as well as a link to the Discord group chat, which is where you can talk to myself and other models over different topics. There are quite a few of you already there, and it would be awesome if you joined us. By the way, just in case you don't already know, there may be spoilers in the video for upcoming arcs and characters. Today's video is What If All For One Killed All Might Part 1. Now, into the video. The fight would begin the same way as in the series. All Might comes in from the sky, slamming into All For One. It would clash several times, with shockwaves going all over the place. Then the League of Villains would begin to go up against Bakugo. It's at this point that the first change takes place. All for One uses the search quirk that he stole to know the location of everyone on the battlefield. All for One and All Might continue clashing over and over. Deku and his group come in to save Bakugo with the same plan as in the anime. All Might knocks All for One away to stop him from taking Bakugo back as the group acts to save him. This is where All for One hits All Might with a much stronger attack and knocks him back away for a minute. He then uses the forcibly activation quirk to activate the warp gate quirk to bring Izuku, Ida, Bakugo, and Kurushima to the battlefield. The warp gate quirk requires you to know the exact location and coordinates of the location you wish to open a warp gate to. Due to the search quirk being used on Bakugo, he knew his exact location. Then he just opened a portal to that location and he appeared through it. Now that Bakugo and the group are back in the battlefield, Momo and Todoroki have to make a choice whether they want to fight or to run. I believe that Momo and Todoroki would both choose to act and help their classmates, and the situation would now show that the League of Villains is outnumbered, but All For One would use his impact recoil to redirect the force of All Might's attacks to make it so that the situation is difficult all around. All For One would use all the students there as shields, firing attacks at them causing All Might to have to try and counter them or move them out of the way. This would lead to All Might draining himself far faster than before, and the second that Gran Torino was taken out, this turned into a one-sided fight, with All Might only being able to defend the students around him. Slowly one by one, All For One would be taking out the heroes, with his shockwaves destroying the ice barriers with ease and the heroes only being able to defend. They were slowly being overpowered. Azuku was blaming himself. If only he hadn't broken both of his arms, he would be able to do more. A full power clash between All Might and All For One happens in the middle of the group, and this causes all the students to split up and move away. Tomura takes this advantage to go behind Momo while she was watching the clash and grab her by the throat. Azuku turned to his right to see him do this. He watched as her throat turned to dust, and her head fell off her shoulders. All Might then saw what just happened. He turned away from All For One, and All For One hit him, putting another hole on the other side of his chest. All Might clutches his wound as he threw his last punch. The United States of Smash! All For One was about to clash this one when he was hit in the side of the head by Deku, causing him to realize that he had never used the search quirk on the new group. As Deku hit him, he yelled, you hurt all these people, this is your fault. All Might then hit him in the side of his chest with the United States of Smash. All for one is sent flying into a building. All Might stands there, covered in steam, just about to pass out. Everyone else is over where Momo's body. Todoroki finally managed to freeze the group of villains by freezing the whole area. Everyone except for Todoroki and Bakugo are crying. But Bakugo and Todoroki appear to be a bit spaced out. After a minute, the frozen villain seemed to vanish into a black fluid as Ulfwant has teleported them to him. He then used his warp gate quirk to take himself and the villains away. Over with the students, All Might stumbled over towards Momo's body. He fell to his knees crying, blood rushing out of his wound, covering himself. As no one noticed all this blood, due to them being traumatized by Momo's death, she was the one who didn't want to go. Each of them blames themselves for her being there. A minute or two pass as All Might falls to the ground, pale, in a pool of his own blood. This snaps some of them out of it. Zuku runs over to All Might and tries to shake him to wake up, but nothing happens. The next day or so is a blur. The group find themselves all in the hospital. They had been kept there overnight. They're not really sure what's just happened. Is All Might really dead? Did they just watch the symbol of peace die? Anyway. 
that's it for this part everyone. Part 2 will be out in the next week or so. It will cover the fallout of the death of Momo and All Might. Anyway, thank you all for watching, I hope you had an amazing day. Don't forget to join my Discord and if you feel like supporting the channel, my Patreon is always an option. Today's hashtag is hashtag for Momo. Anyway, peace out mortals and have an amazing day.